Doodlebutt here. I just had to do it. People are going crazy for this pen online. It's got like four and a half star review out of 4,000 reviews here just in Canada alone. Can only imagine what it is in the States. People think this pen's amazing. Let's find out if it is. You crack the box open, slide out another box, your classic pen coffin pen case. Tons of effort on the design and labeling. It's gorgeous. Look at that. I've never seen one with nothing on it. But that's uh, whatever. It's okay. Let's talk about the pen. Crack it open. Pen. You got some cartridges. Uh, it actually, it's got two in the box, one in the barrel. So there was a little thought into this uh, foam cutout. There's little holes here so you can put your finger in to scoop out the, the uh, ink cartridges here. Um, so yeah, if you've never had a fountain pen before, maybe this is the first place you go. Heck, on Amazon Prime, you get it the next day, so I, I get it. It's pretty cheap, about 10 bucks US, I think it is, fourteen fifteen here in Canada. So you're ready to go, includes the ink. Enough about that. So it's an all-metal pen. It's got a little bit of weight to it. Uh, let's check it on the scale. What do we got? Yeah, like 30 grams, 31 grams. So... You'll see this is fairly small pen, pretty slender. So it's pretty heavy for a small pen. How much of that is uh, the body? 18. So that's, that's quite a bit in that cap. I got a big hand. So, uh, you know, I, I got to post it. But I could see if you had a smaller hand or something, uh, someone at the office there, she tried out the pen, wanted to get her thoughts on it. And for her, it was way... She goes, oh, this is really heavy. And it was way too heavy for her when she posted it. So... Um, yeah, but it's okay unposted as well. It's a pretty plain Jane pen. It's not going to win any design awards for sure, but let's run you through. It's an all metal pen. You got your little clip here. It's it's pretty stiff. I, you know, I that's not going to slide over a shirt pocket easy if you do that. I never put pens in shirt pockets, but if you like to do that, eh, it's not too easy to slide over, but it works nonetheless. It'll stop it from rolling. You got a chrome finial here on the end. Similar on the back. It's got a couple little ridges there too. Uh, that's about all I can say there. It's a black metal pen. Pop cap. So that is handy. It's, this is a quick uncap pen. The pop cap mechanism. It's pretty satisfying. Pretty good. I did notice that it does make a bit of a ping type of sound. Like a tiny little hammer hitting an anvil. I'll uh, hold it up to the microphone here so you can give her a listen. Not the end of the world, but just a little thought I'd tell you. It makes that little noise. The uh, section here, it's all chromed as well. You know, it, it can make it a little bit slick. So if you're someone who's got sweaty hands or eats chips and then grabs the pen, you're going to have a hard time. It's also fairly narrow as well. So for my hand, it's a little bit small, that's for sure. But uh, for the average person, it's okay. I, I just hold it back a little bit further, maybe place my thumb up on the barrel, then it's a little more comfortable. It's a little wider there. Not too bad. Um, unbranded nib. No logos, no nothing on there. I got the M, which means medium. Um, you can also get a fine. That's all there is to say about the nib. <laughs> it's pretty plain. Unscrews. Um, pretty squeaky. Oh my gosh, the sounds on that. I'll, uh, I'll get it up to the microphone here and give you a sound. So yeah, that's uh, a result of the chrome on chrome. I, I, maybe that gets better over time, but it, it, is, it hurts the ears pretty good. Um, they include the cartridge when it's inside the barrel here too. So again, pretty plain bits. Not, no cool features and stuff like that. But again, it's, it's a cheap pen. I'm not expecting amazingness with this thing. Like I said, I've used it for about a week, I guess week and a half now. And it's all right. I, I had to customize the nib to my liking. But uh, out of the box here, it wrote just fine. I'm going to show you a writing sample here in a moment, too. The feed, I don't know, it, it feels a little uh, unfinished compared to some other ones. Just a little bit sharper on the corners. Uh, I don't know, and it just it seems to be out of alignment all the time. You can see there here on mine, it just seems to get a little crooked. So maybe that's just mine. But other than that, it does post, gets on there. You know, not the most secure, but it'll do the job. Put it in there. I like it posted just because it is a bit short for my hand as well. Again, there's not much to say about it. I uh, I took the pen apart. I 
Okay, there we go. Okay. You couldn't really take too much of a part. It's all brass construction. I thought maybe I could disassemble the whole thing and I'd give it a cool paint job or something like that, but it's not going to happen. Plus, who am I kidding? I don't have time for that. But I suppose the biggest thing I found with this guy was uh, had to do with the converter when you put one on here. So uh, the one I use, this is off of a Jinhao pen. As you can see here, if we focus, good lord. Anyways, that's a Jinhao converter I put on there. I've tried some other ones. These seem to fit the best. But you put it on there and it's it's super loose. I, I've never worried about losing a section into a bottle of ink when I fill a pen. But with this one, <laughs> every time I've inked it, I've worried I'm going to lose it into the bottle of ink. And then I'm toast. So... Yeah, their, their fit and their tolerance on that just isn't quite there. That is just way too loose. In fact, when you assemble the pen, it rattles quite a bit. You can hear this thing rattling around. And actually, I've, I've had it twice now where uh, I've taken the pen, went to write with it, and I said, oh, something's loose in there, took it out, and the converter actually popped right off, even though I had this in a little pen case and took it with me. So that is one thing uh, I've noticed with the pen is just... I, you know, that's not a that's not a good fit on taking a converter. The pen this reminded me of was this guy here. This is my Waterman Expert 3. Very similar kind of design. This guy's a little bit bigger. And, uh, you know, this one here, a bit smaller. But just kind of reminded me of that classic fountain pen design. The uh, fit and finish. I mean, look. This one's whatever. I think it was 14 15 bucks Canadian. This one's about 130 Canadian, so 10 times the price. You should have a better pen. But yeah, in the hand, you can feel it just feels nicer. The The pop cap mechanism is, is nicer as well, but they are fairly similar. You know, the pop cap, tapered section into a nib. Uh, I think they're fairly similar size. The posting on this is it's much netter, nicer. Sorry, it uh, snaps on there. It's more secure. But uh, yeah, very similar. If you have a Waterman Expert 3, very similar styling and overall design with the pen as well. And I'm going to show you a writing sample I did with this one with the medium nib. This has a medium nib as well. So I thought let's compare the two and just see how they're looking. So here's the writing sample I did. I put ink into the converter, of course, the Amazon Basics. Um, again, I got the medium on it as well. It writes like a medium, like other medium pens I have, medium nib pens I have pretty good. Wetness was okay. Of course, I had to get a tiny drop of water on it to ruin it. And uh, yeah, they go close up there just so you can see. This writes like any other regular medium nib. The wetness was okay. It a little scratchy. Um, the tines, actually, one was just a tad longer than the other. Um, alignment was fairly close, you know, but uh, yeah, a little, just not the best out there. But again, for the price point, I'm not expecting a miracle. I did grind the nib. You could, I'll do another writing sample. You can see I went to a medium cursive italic. So you can see that contrast there with the thick and thin strokes. We'll get back to that in a bit. But just to compare it against my other pen, as I mentioned, that has a medium nib. You can see here, let's see if we can get them close to each other. Uh, there we go. I'd say the uh, this one's a tad thicker than the Waterman's uh, medium. But uh, all in all pretty close to each other it's what you get is what you expect with this guy as well if i was going to use this pen long term i would have preferred this in a fine that's a little thicker than my personal preferences but to each their own overall thoughts on the pen yeah for this price point it's it's nothing wrong with it whatsoever this may be your first pen the nice thing is yes of course the whole amazon gig you can order it on a Thursday and it's at your mailbox the next day. So that's definitely an edge they have on there as well. But the uh, the 4.5 out of 5 stars that this is getting, I don't get it. This is very middle of the range. There are lots of other pins at this price point. So let's go through those. But what do I like about it? It works. It puts ink, ink on the paper. Um, I mean, it doesn't come with the converters. Okay. But overall, the cap is okay. It posts. It does the job. It fits in your hand. It's going to put ink on the page. But let's look at some other pens. I only have a few, but other pens you can get at this price point. So these are all pens that are cheaper than the Amazon Basics one. Here's a Jin Hao. This is, I think, a 166. 
I still don't know the exact name of this one, but this is a nice little brass pocket pen. Um, this is a, the Kaweco Sport kind of knockoff as well. And you can, this is one thing. So this is probably one thing with the Amazon Basics. It's very basic. As they say, it only comes in one color, fine or medium. That's your only choice you get to make. So if you're okay with a black pen with chrome furnishings on it, this is the pen for you. But if you like to have a little choice in color and that's just too boring for you there, there's a lot more out there as well. So again, you know, you can choose different colors if you like. This comes in a bunch of colors. Uh, these also all come with converters. So something Amazon's not chucking in there. All these pens come with converters. Uh, you can have one that's kind of stripey as well, pop cap. Um, just as good there. This this clip is a little bit nicer how it's made as well. Very similar nib. Um, actually, let me mention this right now. <laughs> so there's no branding on this pen whatsoever. But when I look at the overall construction, my general thought is whoever made this pen. Now this is through Bauer, but I mean that's the the branding that's on there. Right? I mean there's probably a place that makes pens for everybody with the exact same parts with different branding, right? That's my thought, anyways. But Whoever made this pen seems to have made this pen. I mean, the nib is it's the same nib. Uh, the feed, everything is exactly the same. The construction, this is brass as well. The plug here at, at the end, how this one's put into, like this, the construction and everything seems absolutely identical on this guy as it does on the Amazon. So they don't tell you who made it. Well, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but if I were to guess, put five bucks in, in, in the pot to see who, who made this pen, whoever made this one, I, I would guess would make this one as well. Right. Here's the Jinhao 159 and a cool purple if you like that. That's, you know, you can get that too. Another one is the Jinhao 51A. Lots of color options. Uh, you know, this is a copy type pen of the Parker 51. I would pick this pen over this guy most likely. It's a little bit lighter for the size of the pen. Uh, works really well. The pop cap, I think, is a little bit nicer as well. And if you're willing to spend maybe an extra $5, you got this guy here, the, the Muji. Now, this, again, doesn't come with a converter, much like the uh, the Amazon pen. But this is a much better built pen. You might might not be the styling for you. Again, this, this doesn't have any uh, options, even on nib size or color. So, yeah, okay. But I find, overall, this is a, a far superior built pen than the Amazon Basics. But for the price, again, there's nothing wrong with the Amazon pen, but just uh, at that price point, there is a massive assortment of pens you can get. You can even get some from companies, say like Platinum and stuff like that, that are in and around that same price point that I feel is a better pen. So how many stars would I give this pen? Uh, it wouldn't be four and a half. <laughs> I would say three, something like that. It's very just middle of the road. Um, but yeah, it, it does its job, but there are a few little things, like I said, that cartridge, uh, sorry, the converter fitting on there, that's a problem. Um, again, it fell off a couple times and every time I ink it, I'm totally paranoid of dumping my section into my bottle of ink. And if you think my hands are dirty now, wow, getting that out would be an absolute nightmare. These threads, they have gotten a little better compared to fresh out of the box, but, uh, they do squeak like crazy. Um, yeah, whew, it, yeah, right there. That, I mean, that took absolutely nothing to pop it off. It almost came off on its own. So that, that to me is the biggest issue with the pen design and all that stuff. That's everyone's personal choice. But to me, that's a bit of a challenge there. So the question I always ask myself, if I lost this pen, if it got stolen, damaged, whatever, would I buy it again? Because I love it so much. No, I wouldn't. So, I'm, you know, to me, this is just a bit of a boring basic pen. There's lots of other options I feel are a little bit better, kind of cooler, more functional as well. But, as I always say, no bad pens. So, I took a boring pen and did some nib work on it to make it kind of fun and cool. Let's check that out. So, now we got the Amazon Basics, but it's not so basic because I ground the nib. The medium cursive italic. So just to show you what that means, if you haven't seen this before, 
the nib is it's, it's kind of like a stub so it's it's flat across the top and it's thinner as well and again I, you know i i always leave a little bit of meat on the bone so if i want to change it or something i got some tipping material to work with but now it's just got a little flare to it so thinner cross strokes thicker down strokes and just makes the writing stand out a little bit more. Let me do a quick writing sample, I'll show you. So here we go, this is the writing sample with the curse of italic nib I did now. Again, you can't buy this, so it, uh, you know it is what it is. But you can see it's just got a little more line variation to it. That's a little better for me. And you can just see no line variation here. So it's just the writing looks a little bit cooler. You can see the the and the the. You can see that change there. So for me, this just gives it a little bit more flair. And now I'm I'm kind of happy with the pen. I don't mind it. This isn't a pen that uh, I'm going to go for all the time, but I'll have it maybe in my office, on my desk, handy to use. And now the nib is smoother. It wasn't that great before. Uh, the flow is just where I want it, and it's got a nice little flair to it. Like I said, I've used it for about a week and a half. You can see it's starting to, the enamel there is starting to chip off underneath the clip. So uh, I don't know what that's going to look like long term. You can see the brass underneath this guy as well. But yeah, it is what it is. Does it deserve four and a half stars? I don't think so. That's probably, you know, just coming from folks that maybe don't have a lot of experience with fountain pens, possibly. That's my guess. And they haven't tried other things. This this does not blow my mind. I am not amazed by it. But it's good for the price point. Again, I'm not expecting much. Uh, you don't get a heck of a lot with it other than a pen that performs reasonably well. It does the one thing a pen should do, which is it puts ink on the page the wetness is okay. The nib isn't that spectacular. And uh, what you see is what you get, like I said. So let's bottom line it. If I hadn't have bought this pen, uh, would I feel like I'm missing out now that I do have it? No. Uh, I, would I rebuy it? Probably not. I'd rather go with one of these other pens where you just have more options as far as whether it's colors or nib options. Uh, heck, this thing, I mean, I strapped this to the, the windshield of my car and took it through a car wash and it still runs no problem as well. So there we go. Those are my thoughts by some random guy on the internet. Is this four and a half stars? I don't think so. You got lots of other pens that are available out there. Check out my little mango chutney writing sample I did with this guy for some fun if you haven't seen it already. And most importantly, catch you next time.